Double curve is one of the most confusing, complex, and interesting parts of kibby body typing. It's perhaps also one of the most controversial elements of kibby body types. Every time I make a TikTok on double curve, it tends to get millions of views and thousands of comments from women saying, why are we discussing women's bodies in this way? Why are we dissecting body types in this manner? Which is a really great question and something that I am gonna address today. As well as breaking down this concept of the double curve so I can help you find if you have it. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a personal stylist, and on this channel we use body types to elevate our personal style and end the war with our wardrobes. So let's rewind a little bit. Double curve is a concept used in Kibbe body types. These body types were theorized by a man called David Kibbe, who in the 80s came up with these 13 originally, now 10 body types, which are based around this idea of yin and yang. Yin being soft, delicate, rounded, yang being long, sharp, straight, angular. Kind of dichotomies, these opposing energies that we of course come from uh, ancient Chinese culture and we see it everywhere in nature including in our bodies. Now there's also this space in between so it opposite ends you have the extremes and in the middle we have different kinds of blends of the two types. Double curve can be found in four kibby body types. Romantic, I don't know why I'm starting my little finger, romantic, theatrical romantic, soft gamine and soft classic. Double curve is the defining feature of the romantic. A woman who's a romantic can just have double curve, no petite, no balance, no vertical. A pure romantic is double curve. A romantic can also have petite, I'm gonna come onto that in a minute, but double curve is basically the most yin that a woman can be. Soft, round, delicate. You have double curve if you look like two circles sitting on top of each other, kind of this figure eight image. All romantic types have double curve. Like I said, it is the most yin that a woman can be. Romantics are double curve and sometimes plus petite. Theatrical romantics are double curve plus petite plus vertical. So theatrical romantics always have double curve. Soft gamines, dominant features are petite and vertical. This is contrasted, so they're little and they're also sharp. Plus curve or double curve. And soft classics are balance plus curve and very, very occasionally double curve but this is rare. You find your body type and whether or not you have double curve through a line drawing. Kibby goes into this into a lot of depth in his Facebook group, Strictly Kibby, which I very much recommend joining if you want to go on your own journey of finding your body type. This is the last stage in his kind of series on how to find your body type. And um, basically the idea is that you draw abstract shapes to represent your body. Sorry about the cockerel if you heard that. <laughs> You draw these abstract shapes to find your yin and yang balance, so how soft and how sharp you are by looking at your figure and kind of becoming more objective about the shapes you see in front of you. Once you finish your different kinds of line drawing, if you see two equal circles in the upper half of your body and the lower half of your body, then you have double curve. This is not the same as an hourglass figure. Very confusing, but an hourglass figure is a very specific kind of body which is under the fruit shape, kind of body shaping theory, which I talk about in this video on 10 methods to find your body shape. And an hourglass figure is made up of certain proportions. So there are certain proportions which mean you have an hourglass figure. That doesn't apply to double curve at all. You may have like an inch between your shoulders and your waist and your hips or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really come into it. And it also goes the other way. You can have an indented waist and be an hourglass and not have double curve at all. So an hourglass can have a more angular shape, like that, if you see what I mean. And that's not double curve, because that's not soft and rounded. However, you can have curve at any height. And once you get taller and longer, you have more angular shapes coming into your frame, whether that be your shoulders, in your hips, your torso, which means that you're not actually two circles sitting on top of each other, even though you might have roundness and softness in both your chest and your hips. And obviously once you're elongated and stretched out, there's more space between the top half of your body and the bottom half of your body. So there's a space in between, which would be like a different shape, if that makes sense. Ladies with double curve have softness in their shoulders as well. The curve translates all the way. So they will have soft, delicate shoulders, which completes the circle. A lot of people tend to focus on the waist because this is what we do with the hourglass silhouette, but it's an entirely different concept. It's the entire shape of your body. You might also have curve, 
which is not rounded and soft and yin. It would actually come from the bones. A lot of women have more hexagonal, is that hexagonal? Or like diamond shape hips rather than circular hips. And even though this means that your hips are prominent, they're not so rounded and delicate and like a circle. You might also not have really big boobs and still have double curve. Um, it's not all about how big your chest and your hips are. Soft Classic is a recent addition, which somewhat irks me. It's something that he's talked about very recently on Strictly Kibby that Soft Classics can have double curve. So for a long time, double curves seemed to be something that only yin dominant or petite types could have. I know Romantic isn't always petite, but they have the ability to be petite. Soft Classics don't have the ability to be petite. My birds are so loud today, I'm so sorry. Um, soft Classics don't have are not petite because they are balanced. And in being balanced, they are inherently not petite because petite is an extreme feature. So this is why we always thought that soft classics didn't have double curve because we've kind of associated double curve with this kind of petite body type. But Kibby has basically debunked that and says that's not the case. You can find double curve in soft classics. Now I find that this complicates the notion of soft classic for me, as this was its main distinguisher from the pure romantic type who, as I just said, doesn't have to have petite, they can be moderate. So if both can be moderate with double curve, how do you distinguish them? It's an interesting question, something that we're all still figuring out. Kibby is very cryptic with the way he describes things and talks about things, but basically what you're looking for in classics is that balance, which romantics won't have. So classics will appear more moderate, more in the middle, maybe with some curve in the chest and hips, whereas romantics, their dominant feature is that double curve and it's the first thing you will see about them. Soft gamines, we have the same problem. Both soft gamine and theatrical romantic can now have dominant features of petite, vertical and double curve. So how do you tell the difference? And this is why once you get into the yin types, things get very complicated. It gets much harder to find your body type once you start looking anything with softness in the smaller range, because they can literally have the same dominant features. And I think the way you distinguish between them is of course, what is the, their most dominant feature? So soft gamines will have this petite vertical contrast, whereas theatrical romantics is gonna be a lot more blended, a lot more soft. Double curve is gonna be the most noticeable thing about them. They're very lush. So let's address the question of why are we defining bodies like this? Why are we breaking them down into their individual characteristics, literally looking at how soft or rounded or how sharp a woman, woman is? Isn't it just totally shallow and actually a step backwards? Well, I obviously don't think so because this is what my whole life is literally about. I think that finding this somewhat objective stance towards your body can help you feel a lot more comfortable in what you wear. And looking at your body and defining the features of your body by something other than ugly, fat, bad, wrong, and just looking at it for what it is. By the way, none of those things I just said are, like fat is not an inherently bad thing, but a lot of women do define themselves by this alone as a bad thing, which is of course not right. It's not the way we should be looking at our bodies. And the way I think we should look at our bodies is, okay, that is more of a rectangular shape there. That's more of a circular shape there. This is how I want to bring that out in the, my clothes that I wear, because I want to honor the way that my body was created and honor that with my clothing. And I think there's something very beautiful in that. Now that's up to you if you want to bring that into your own life. But for me, there's something very empowering about looking at the shapes of our body as neither a good thing nor a bad thing. And just look at them as something that's there and something that defines who, how our body works. I think it's just very interesting. And I think double curve is just one of those things which adds to the complexity of Kibby. And having, having double curve is not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing that you might have, like an elbow. You may or may not have an elbow. And it's not inherently good or bad. That may not be a good example because you may struggle without an elbow. But you see what I mean? Like, it's not about trying to define whether your body is a good body or a bad body for someone else, because it's irrelevant. It's about finding out the unique quirks, characteristics of the body that you live in and honoring that in the way you dress and finding more comfort in the way you dress. I hope that helps clarify why I'm interested in this kind of stuff. Totally up to you if it's not your jam. I mean, what if I don't want to live the way you live? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Andrea. Now, double curve is not always that easy to see. It sounds like a very easy concept. Hourglass is much easier to define, but nothing in Kibby is easy. <laughs> what is good 
Where it gets tricky is soft chameleons and soft classics, they don't always have double curve and Kibi doesn't declare which of his verified celebrities do or don't have double curve. But what we do know for sure is that everyone in a romantic category does have double curve. So this helps us to define double curve and see the range of what double curve can look like. Now a lot of people when they think double curve, they think Salma Hayek, Marilyn Monroe, this very much hourglass figure. But we know, because of the other verified celebrities, that this is not the only form that Double Curve can come in. Selena Gomez, Jada Pinkett Smith, Christina Ricci, Jane Seymour, for example, all don't have that very classically um, Marilyn Monroe hourglass shape, and yet they all have double curve. Even Jada Pinkett Smith, who does not have a particularly defined waist, she's very fit, she um, is very muscular because she works out a lot. I um, mean, even if we look at her when she's a little bit softer, she doesn't necessarily have big hips, big boobs. She's delicate and little and soft. And that is what we're looking for. That's how you define yin dominance. In theatrical romantics as well, I tend to find that that double curve doesn't necessarily manifest itself self in two circles as such, but two ovals. It's more elongated, it's more sharp, because that is, of course, the defining feature of a theatrical romantic, that they are narrow and round. Hopefully, this video hasn't just confused you further about double curve, although I am fairly sure that it has, because double curve is a really confusing concept. I've explained pretty much everything I know about it and everything I understand about it. I also don't think this is the be all and end all. A lot of people do, a lot of people use you do or you don't have double curve as this defining thing about whether you are or aren't a romantic or something. And I don't really think it's the case. I mean, with Kibby just saying that soft classics can have double curve, I think it's a lot more fluid than we imagine it is. And it's not this exact, your shoulders and your hips must be exactly the same. And you have to have this very clearly defined waist because look at Jada Pinkett Smith. I think if Jada Pinkett Smith came on the Freely Kibby Facebook group and put a picture of her body there, people would be saying you don't have double curve. And she does. So I think you've got to be open to the flexibility of the idea and just look at your body as on this journey, if you want to go on a kibby body typing journey, look at it in regards to yin and yang balance, the shapes that you see, finding a pattern and honoring that pattern. And I think that's the best thing you can do. If you want help to do that, I really recommend downloading my eight week guide, my workbook, which I worked so, so hard on and you guys seem to really be liking. It take you on this journey of eight weeks from the start where you're not particularly sure on how to dress, how you feel about your body, how you feel about your body type, to the end where you should have really clearly defined wardrobe, style and you'll have a pretty good understanding of what you want to shop for and what to leave behind. I think it's amazing. I would have absolutely died to have this like a couple of years ago. It would have changed my wardrobe forever and I really recommend it. So go and check that out. And if you've enjoyed this video, I really think you will enjoy my playlist on Kibby body types. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. I feel like my birds are trying to talk back to me today. They don't usually do this.